Catwoman and the Joker fight to the death in Batman number 49. Hey fellow comic book fans and welcome to the Brazen Bulls comic book spotlight where we spend 10 to 15 minutes discussing some of this week's most significant moments. The following video does contain spoilers so if you haven't read the comic book yet please be sure to do so. If you like what we're doing here hit that subscribe button visit thebrazenbull.com for more great comic book content. Alright guys, Batman number 49, what an issue. Yes, beginning where we left off uh, with Batman in a crumpled pile on uh, the floor of a church and Catwoman and Joker facing off above him. Yeah, so this was, this was an intense issue and a, I think it was a very intimate issue. I mean, the majority of the issue was just the Joker and Catwoman having a conversation. Um, which was really um, interesting and really uh, insightful, I thought. Well, I mean, I, I think you're, you're bearing the lead here. They're, they're basically trying to kill each other. Yes. And nearly succeeding. And uh, leading up to their possible last breaths, they decide to start talking about their relationship with Batman and the other people in Bat Batman's life who, who tend to be, uh, you know, Super villains. So there's there's a kind of twisted uh, romance going on here, and also some funny insights about you know <laughs> why does Penguin have an umbrella? Yeah, I, I think that you know one of the most interesting aspects of Batman it has always been his villains, and really the relationship that he has with his villains and his villains have with one another, and those relationships are really put on display here. You know, we have Catwoman and the Joker talking to each other as as friends, as a, you know, at the very least, as, as colleagues here. Yeah. And um, it's it's very interesting to hear them talk about Batman in a way that, you know, isn't um, negative. You know, they're not plotting to kill him or, or anything else. You know, you have villains talking the way they would talk, I would assume, behind closed doors about you know, the hero that fights with them. And it was just very, very interesting. Ben, what did you think, sir? It was good. Um, like, it was, it was entertaining. Like you guys said, like, the just the conversation between the two of them was very, very well done. Uh, my big issue is the fact that uh, the Joker shot 15 times with a six-shooter. <laughs> uh, ignoring that. But otherwise, it was really good, even though I was kind of like... I was not confused, but I was like... I mean, I assume, you know depending how things end but i mean strictly speaking one of them dies <laughs> and <laughs> yeah does does that person you don't know like and so i don't know I, i'm not sure how i felt about the ending yeah I, I mean here's the thing we, we can kind of spell it out here we gave the warning um from the looks of it right now um the joker's dead simple as that and he dies in a very interesting way um you know, he dies trying to kill Catwoman after, you know, pointing out or really emphasizing that he needs Batman to kind of stay like Batman. If, if Batman's happy, Batman's no longer Batman. And, you know, the Joker to exist absolutely needs him. You know, he says here that he needs him to, to Joker needs Batman to tell him that he's a horror, that he, he needs Batman to hit him and to bleed him, that really the Joker can't exist without Batman. And, you know, now we have this thought of, well, what's going to happen if Batman does become whole and if he finds happiness with Catwoman? So can Batman not be Batman if he's happy? Well, we don't know that. I mean, that's certainly what uh, what the Joker believes. But this whole uh, setup towards the wedding is all this investigation of what's really important and what really matters. And each of them have to do with this kind of <clears throat> central relationship they have with, with, with Batman and what he means to them, what they mean to him. Now, Joker being the hero of his own story thinks that whatever changes Batman relates to him. But you know, that's not necessarily the case. Everybody thinks they know Batman, but I don't think anybody really does. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a more complex situation here. Um, from the looks of it too, Catwoman might have reconsidered a bit. I don't know, this is a very ominous ending. Just the fact that we last see her, you know, laughing like the Joker. 
laughter that's literally exploding out of the word balloon there. I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of interested to see if she actually goes through with the wedding. I think she's having second thoughts here, and it's interesting that the Joker is the one that conjured up those second thoughts. Which, of course, he would do. Yes. I mean, there's, there's nothing about this issue that uh, isn't uh, out of character for the Joker. Mm-hmm. Um, that Catwoman's actually considering her feelings is a little unusual, but um, I don't know, being manipulated by, uh, by the Joker would be the first time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not far-fetched. Um, and you know what I really liked throughout the issue is how essentially Catwoman and the Joker were, you know, side by side throughout the entire issue, you know. And at one, you know, for, for the majority of the issue, they're, they're laying down next to one another. You know, they're level. They're on the same level. And I really just liked seeing them like that, having this honest conversation that took place for a while. They were laying there for a while bleeding out or trying not to bleed out. Yeah. You know, really, while uh, Batman was poisoned and stunned and, you know, just completely removed from the picture. Right. And in um, the rooms of a church, don't yes. forget. Yes, exactly. I, this was great. This was a fantastic issue. And, um, you know, I just really like how there was so much emphasis placed on the relationship between Batman and his villains and the villains and one another. You know, let's not forget for a while here, you know, we have Catwoman and the Joker talking about the Penguin and about Two-Face and, you know, how close they are with one another. That's probably my favorite part. Right? And the Riddler has them all figured out. Yeah, which was which was really cool because there was this, um, you know, almost like a like a Hamlet thing going on. Where, you know, this whole time the Riddler thinks that the Joker is, is feigning insanity. And, um, oh my god, that was so cool. Yeah. It was just so cool, right? And uh, you know what I think it is? I think that we really don't ever get to see villains behaving like people. They're always just doing especially things. the that... Joker, though. Like, the Joker yeah. especially is not one who's, like, prone to normal tendencies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's always so far removed. So I think when we see those, like, ounces of humanity... We just have to like eat them up, but it, it was it was really really good. Um, I want to know what happens. I mean, it, it appears as though the Joker's dead. I think it's a fitting death, but I also think I, I don't know if it makes sense to actually kill the Joker here. Um, yeah, I'd be kind of surprised if this is the last we see of him. Right? Okay, I, I never believe that kind of stuff. You know, and until. You know, we, we poke the body and, and there's an <laughs> autopsy and then it's buried with a stake through its heart in a crossroad. He's not dead. Yeah. Just the, just the thought, like, makes me a little nauseous not having the Joker anymore. So I really don't hope that that's the case. Um, I think there's, like, almost no chance that that's the case. No chance at all? Ben, what do you think? Is this the... I don't, this is definitely not the end uh, no? for him. I mean, I, I don't know how, but I don't see it being, being the end because... I mean, that's like one of your huge, huge, like, villains. I would just be shocked to have it, uh, like, off him. Or, or at least, if he's dead, there's some, like, twisted brother-son thing. <laughs> like, yeah. That, some that, Joker substitute, almost, that could yeah. just as good. Well, that would be, that would be my, you know, the angle I, w- I would approach it from. I think that this Joker can die because there's no reason why there can't be another Joker. You know, it's just like, you know, Batman essentially has been, you know, training protégés for how long? You know, because one day we're not going to have Batman, but we're not going to have Bruce Wayne, but we'll still have Batman. Now, I don't think the Joker is training protégés, but I think that the way this issue is set up, it's clear that the Joker and Batman, they, they can't really function without one another. So if Batman is still alive, I think it only makes sense for us to always have a Joker. It's just kind of... uh, So I think that there is some sort of possibility, but I don't know. And I don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing if we have a new Joker. Or if this whole time we've had multiple Jokers that we just weren't necessarily, you know, we didn't realize that there was more than one Joker. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. But I think there's no way it's ever going to be that complicated. I don't know. I, I think it's happening. I think it's happening. I think that this is the moment, and um, especially the re- for me, the reason why I really think something like that, something bigger is happening, is because of the whole, you know, bringing up, well, the Riddler has you all, you know, thinks he has you figured out about feigning insanity, which absolutely makes sense. You know, this whole time, we kind of just look at the Joker as this, you know, uh, manifestation of chaos, Batman's order. So you have to have, you know, yin and yang, but what if he's just a guy playing the part? 
I don't know. I kind of like that idea. You know, I like the thought that there's more to the Joker than just chaos. You know, that he is calculated and he is putting on an elaborate show. Because isn't Batman really just putting Including on... Including faking his own death. Yeah. I mean, he could fake his he own death. He could deeply fake his own death. Yeah. But I mean, I just... I don't know. I like the whole uh, Joker going all hunger artist here and he's got to die because he's got to die for the show. And uh, that's it. We'll just replace him with uh, whatever the hunger artist is replaced with a panther or something. Right? Regardless, uh, getting off topic there. No, I... I I don't know, I think that there is the possibility um, of having a new Joker here. But do we think if this is the end of the Joker, are we going to have a funeral? And if so, who's showing up? Okay. No. No. <laughs> and if there were, it would have to be everybody. Right? I think so. I mean, I don't know. It'd be pretty cool. I, I would I would buy that comic. Seriously, Troll, you get your fanboy up in a up in a, a nod here. You know, nothing in the DC universe sticks ever. That's true. Yeah, but I think he's gonna die now so we can have a triumphant return at some point. Batman slips into a depression because he doesn't have a, a real arch nemesis anymore. You know, him and Catwoman divorce because he's not the Maybe man he, he used to be. No, I don't think so. Come on. All right, guys. No, no. I really don't think that the Joker's dead here. It just makes for interesting conversation. But on that note, I think that that's basically all of Batman number 49 here, what we wanted to talk about. Right? I think so. So this was the BrazenBull.com's comic book spotlight. If you like this episode, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and remember to check out the BrazenBull.com for more great comic book content. Until next week. Bye. Adios.